All right, so let's go right into today and start talking about different ways to mess with the player controller. I don't think mine matches exactly with your guys' anymore because I've just messed with the settings too much. But more or less, the character's kind of moving a little bit on the slower side right now. And he also doesn't fall very fast or anything. So let's start messing with this. So first off, if you go into the rigid body, you can start to mess with gravity scale. And as you mess with gravity scale, he will fall at a faster rate, but he will also not jump up as easily. I actually want to pump this up to something like 10. And immediately, as soon as you go into the game, you'll start to see a problem with this. Mostly that he doesn't jump anymore. So in order to deal with this problem, you can actually go down to the player controller and start to uh, mess with some things like jump force and stuff like that. So if we get jump force up to like say 40, let's go ahead and actually play this inside the minimize mode so that we can play with the inspector as we're messing with the game. And then we can go right down into here. And then we can say something like 30. Is that about good? Let's pump up the speed of his movement. So something like 10. And now he is moving at blistering speeds. Also, I would recommend uh, turning collision detection onto continuous if you don't already have it on continuous. The reason being, it will stop some bugs from happening. Sometimes you'll see that the character's not landing right, he just constantly has that falling animation going on if you don't have it on continuous because uh, it's just missing that detection. Alright, so after messing with it for a bit, I like gravity scale on 7, collision detection on continuous, speed on 10, jump force on 25-ish. Right now, the last thing that we need to do is mess with hurt force, because if we run over to an enemy right now, you see we're not even moving from getting hurt. We double this up, and it's looking a little bit better. Maybe go something like this now. That looks about right to me. 15-ish. Put a 1 from that, and I think that's pretty good for the settings. But the main thing I want you to get out of this is definitely how you can have an interaction between gravity scale, collision detection, speed, jump force, and hurt force to create an entirely an entire different feel to the character. Um, the whole point of how we made the system and how we made everything so that it was... Uh, manipulatable from the inspector was so that you didn't have to do much other than just messing with these numbers to create different fields to it. So now that we've uh, learned how to interact with all these things, if we manipulate these things as variables, we end up having a very handy uh, system to create power-ups. So let's start to mess with that kind of stuff. We're going to go into the tags, we're going to hit add tag, we're going to add another one and we're going to call it power-up. We're going to save that. And we're going to start creating some code based off of that. So go ahead right now as a challenge. Try to create yourself an if statement that says if uh, the other object that you are colliding with is a is tagged with power up, let it do something that uh, debugs into the console so that we can test it out. All right. So you could have just used this uh, piece of code right here as a model. You say if collision dot tag equals equals power up then debug dot log we got a power up you want to comment to do get rid of this so now we want to actually create the object as a challenge I want you to go ahead and pick a, the appropriate sprite and set it up yourself go ahead and try oh and turn it into a prefab now go ahead and try. All right, so you go into your Sunny Land folder, you go into artwork, you can start looking at things. You can do sprites, let's say an item, and gem looks like it's what we're gonna do. I like this glowy looking one. Let's go ahead and drag it in here somewhere. We need to, of course, put it on the right sorting layer, the entity layer, zero. It's very tiny right now, which means that we need to go into this gem, I believe it was gem three. And we need to put it at 16, I believe, is what we do for this one. Then we can apply. That looks about right. We want to have point no filter. That's correct. And compression, none. Good. Now we're going to tag that with power up. And we're going to add a collider 2D to it. That looks about right. And let's drag that into our prefabs folder. All right. So it's now triggering that we're getting a power up in here. So that's good. So first step accomplished. 
So it's time to make the power up actually do something. The exciting part. So let's say that we wanted to make our character uh, jump higher. So that could be extremely useful if, for instance, our player doesn't jump as uh, well as he does right now. So let's pump this down to less on like 20 instead, or maybe even like 15. So it's actually a more difficult thing to jump around, right? So if it's more difficult and we're barely making our jumps like so, which is good so far, but once we get to this point right here, we'd have trouble, right? At that point right there, let's say, let's, if we take this diamond and we move it to right here, let's say, let's just get rid of these cherries, we're not gonna need them. And there we go, we have this like power up right there. Then we can make that thing do something. So, let's have it so that it pumps up our player's speed to, tw I mean, jump back up to 25. Really simple. We just simply, actually, why don't you try to do this? When he uh, clicks on, hits this, let's have it so that the debug doesn't do anything anymore. This diamond disappears, and that he has, uh, his jump force is uh, up to 25. Go ahead and try it. All right, so going back into this tutorial right here, we can start getting to this. We know that we are hitting a power-up. If we go on to saying destroy collision dot game object and then we can also go ahead and go jump force that can equal 25 right instead turn this back on we barely make that jump which is good we run over here we hit this diamond all of a sudden we can jump pretty high yeah hops so we're going to need some kind of physical representation of what just happened so that like, you know, people are just like, oh, okay, I touched that diamond, I can jump higher. They need some kind of way of knowing that their character's in some kind of power-up mode. So if we actually just go get component and then we click on this like so, we go sprite renderer, that will give us access to the sprite renderer component of our player object in here this part right here and as you can see part of that is the color right there so we can actually go in there and just go dot color and have access to it and we can set that equal to whatever we want in this case we're gonna go color dot and let's say for the sake of fun we're gonna make it blue right <laughs> I didn't make my own jump alright so we're barely making our jumps we're definitely not going to make this last one right here. And boom, we turn blue because we are power up mode and we're good to go right now. Right? After toying with that for a little bit, I really feel like yellow might actually be a better color for this. So let's go ahead and do that instead. Or you can do whatever you want for color, of course. There we go. That looks about right. Part of the problem with this, though, is that he stays powered up forever. And that's not how power ups work. We all know that. So let's go ahead and make it so that something else can happen here. So you're going to go private I enumerator reset power, let's call it. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to go yield return new wait for seconds. And then however long we want this to last, say 10 seconds, it's good. And after this is run like so, it will then actually allow us the ability to do something after this. So whatever this says right here, it's something you just end up having to memorize. Yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and it always has to be an I enumerator like so. If you do this, it'll make it so that you can actually do this first, and then it'll allow you to go down and do the next part of the function, right? And so basically you create a timer. And then we can set up our stuff to go back to how it was before. For instance, jump force equals 10. And we can go to, uh, what was it, pick component, sprite renderer. Color equals color dot white is the normal color. Now, the problem with this is this isn't actually running anywhere, and you would think that you just go up here to where we did everything earlier and just write reset power. But that's not how coroutines work. Instead, you have to actually write in start coroutine, put it in parentheses, then you say reset power within this. 
and then you end it. Now, why does things uh, work this way? What is a coroutine? That's basically just something that allows us to use these little timer things, all right? Like, going beyond that is just too complicated. If you need a timer inside of something, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Coroutines tend to be the standard, and this tends to be the way that we go about it. There we go, back to normal. So as you can see, we now have a coroutine in there in action, functioning correctly. We can have an entire power-up system created. It takes a lot of coding and stuff, but it does work. Now, some of the problems with this is we might want to make a variable that keeps track of what our jump force was originally. So we can even have like a previous jump force variable, and then put it in here. We even have like a previous uh, color. Might even want to create an entire class that has all of our stats inside of it beforehand and with a function that saves everything and then we can reload it within here. There's a lot of different ways to go about it, but you get the basic idea of how a power-up system can work now. And I think that's it for this video. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you think. There will be another video coming after this where I start talking about health system because everybody was really into that idea. And I think that's about it. Have a great day, guys. Bye.